Nuclear medicine is an exciting and innovative field that is actually undergoing a lot of change right now. And it is harnessing the precision medicine of molecular imaging where we're actually detecting pathophysiologic processes, whether it be oncologic, neurologic, or cardiac related disease processes that we can detect them earlier we can detect them more sensitively and accurately, and then also use that earlier detection for earlier treatment for our patients. So at Northwestern Medicine, it's been a really exciting time here that we've made a large investment in acquiring newer pet technology, actually ramping up our ability for using dosimetry with our SPEC CTs, and then additionally starting up a cardiac pet program. These are all big steps that's not always available for every nuclear medicine program, but what happened was at Northwestern, we've really seen the importance of this and we've gotten ahead of that curve. Cross-sectional imaging, whether it be CT or MRI, they're very good for detecting the anatomy and enhancing or perfusion characteristics. But when we incorporate a multi modality hybrid imaging with PET or SPEC, we're actually leveraging that uh, molecular imaging precision-based medicine that we can detect very specific early detection of disease and accurately that the other modalities alone just can't provide. It is much more specific uh, compared to other modalities, you know, um, that we can focus on the function and we can focus on the receptors, we can target the, the abnormality that what we are looking for, some type of cancers, we can definitely target the specific receptors specific to that cancer and then try to image uh, with high sensitivity and high specificity with more accurate uh, detection. You can see very small five millimeter, three millimeter lesions otherwise look normal, but actually metastasis over there or primary tumor over there. So it's a very advanced technique compared to the other very traditional cross-sectional image. So nuclear cardiology is an imaging technique. It's a subspecialty of cardiology. The fundamental principle for the majority of what we do is evaluate blood flow to the heart at normal resting conditions and then when someone's under stress. So we have a technique called cardiac SPECT, which uses a technetium-based radioactive tracer that goes to the heart where we do stress testing. And then more recently, we have cardiac PET, which is a newer, more advanced technique, which fundamentally gives very similar images, but of much higher image resolution. In addition, we can use cardiac PET to quantify blood flow to the heart at both rest and at stress. And that is independently prognostic for patients irrespective of what their actual pictures show. So it's a very powerful technique, which is a little bit newer, and we're very excited to be able to offer it for our patients here. Theranostics is a whole new column of patient treatment that is being provided by nuclear medicine. It's incorporating the molecular imaging component of nuclear medicine, whether it be early detection via targeted ligands or early detection of disease by pathophysiologic process. But that diagnostic component can also be connected with a therapeutic aspect with dedicated radioligand therapy. So as I tell my trainees that every new agent that's coming along either as it's currently available or will be coming should have the advantage of providing a theranostic component. Unlike traditional radiation oncology therapies where you are hitting one area with a large amount of radiation. Here we're targeting the actual cancer cells, whether it be in multiple areas or one area with the amount of radiation that should be going to the tumor and not much else. So we're actually minimizing radiation exposure. There's been a very large interest in nuclear medicine from our residents and trainees, where our trainees realize that nuclear medicine is gonna be a big thing in the part of their career, so they don't wanna be left out. So we've seen a lot of residents really being very interested in doing a fellowship or dedicated training time so that when they go out into practice, whether it be private or academics that they want to be able to perform nuclear and specifically PET CT examinations so that they can be ahead of the game. We need a lot of nuclear medicine physicians again because uh, the field has changed a lot uh, last couple of years. Demand has increased so we, definitely there is a big need nationwide to have uh, those type of radiologists who have uh, highly skilled on both modalities. 
The expansion of cardiac PET in particular is extraordinarily exciting. It allows us to image our patients faster with more accuracy and less radiation to our patients. So cardiac PET in general is growing quite rapidly. We're rapidly expanding our program here and there are other sites across the country that are doing it. And that's one area that's really exciting for the future of the field of nuclear medicine and in particular nuclear cardiology. Being able to more effectively diagnose people earlier with heart disease and offer treatment is going to be one of the most important things that we do. Can we use nuclear cardiology or cardiac imaging, cardiac PET, to identify people who don't have clinical disease yet, but have what are called subclinical disease, in order to help aggressively treat them to prevent someone from getting cardiac disease, so preventing them from having a heart attack. I see that in the future of nuclear medicine, our capability and our footprint within any radiology department is going to significantly increase. We're providing a very precision-based imaging examination, whether it be PET or SPECT or even our general gamma cameras, that are detecting disease much earlier and much more accurately than any other process. I think having a PET CT in a hospital is gonna be just as required as having an MRI. It's gonna be an essential part of treatment going forward.